Hello, we're going to today talk about our next section of our topic, insulation, the water cycle, and climate. This is part two, duration of insulation and reasons for the seasons. The aim for today is to describe the factors that affect the duration of insulation and the seasons. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how the angle of insulation changes with the seasons in the northern hemisphere, which is of course where we live. If we're looking at this globe on the top here, we're looking at the equator, the Tropic of Cancer, and the Tropic of Capricorn. The Tropic of Cancer is another main line of latitude. In addition to the equator, that's at zero degrees. The Tropic of Cancer is at 23.5 degrees north, and the Tropic of Capricorn is at 23.5 degrees south. And we'll talk in a little bit about why that's an important number, that 23 and a half degrees. So we're going to talk about the beginning of each season and the uh, dates of the beginning of each season and where the direct rays or the 90 degree angle of insulation is located. So that would, would mean where the maximum intensity, the strongest sunlight is, which has the sun directly overhead. So the first season is summer, the summer solstice, which the date of the summer solstice is June 21st. Now if you think about it, if this is our summer season, this is when the direct rays are closest to us. So the closest to us would be 23 and a half degrees north, which is the Tropic of Cancer. We should also mention that the direct rays of insulation, so direct sunlight, is always between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. It never goes more north of that and never goes more south of that. So the winter solstice is the first day of winter in the northern hemisphere, and this would occur on December 21st. So where do you think that the most intense radiation, the most direct rays of the sun, would be located on this day? Would they be closest to us or furthest from us? So since we know that the beginning of winter is when the rays are... I'm on the... I'm recording. Okay. So since we know that December 21st is the beginning of our winter season, when it starts to get colder here, the direct insulation will be farthest from us, which would be located at the Tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degrees south. Now we get to the equinoxes. So the equinoxes the equinoxes So the spring equinox is the first day of spring, which occurs about March 21st. It can be the 20th, sometimes it's the 22nd. Um, and this is the beginning of our spring season. And as implied by its name, equinox, the uh, direct rays are located at the equator at zero degrees. The same thing with the fall equinox. This occurs on September 21st, and again, the direct rays are located at the equator. So if we take a look at the word equinox, that would help us remember that this, the direct rays are at the equator. The same thing with the fall equinox, which by the way, the fall equinox is also sometimes referred to as the autumnal equinox, which has the word autumn in it, so autumnal. And the spring equinox is also referred to as the vernal equinox. Okay, so those alternate names for those two season beginnings. So another um, thing to look at here with the dates is I've simplified this and kept each of the dates at the 21st. Sometimes you'll see the dates at the 20th or the 22nd or even the 23rd. So just keep in mind, if you keep with the 20, 21st, it's a good way to remember, but don't be thrown off if you see on a question that it's going within a day or so of the, those dates. Also see that um, these seasons each begin every three months, starting with March 21st. So they happen in March 21st. June 21st, September 21st, and December 21st. And this diagram is super important, something that we have to really um, make sure we know how to label. Every time we see this diagram, the first thing we want to look at is which two positions represent summer and winter. So we're going to label the diagram that you have in your notes. And let's note here's the sun, and this is showing the Earth as it revolves around the um, as, as it revolves around the sun. Um, notice that Earth revolves around the sun in a counterclockwise direction. Um, we have the Earth's tilt represented in each diagram. You can see where the axis is tilted. Okay, so just take a look at that. Okay. 
Okay, and notice that it says the Earth is inclined, which means tilted, 23 and a half degrees. Okay, so Earth's tilt is at 23 and a half degrees. So there's that number 23 and a half that we just mentioned before. So Earth's tilt at 23 and a half degrees. This is what changes with the location of direct rays, those 90 degree rays at, um, over the course of the year. So if we take a look at summer, notice the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So this is our summer season. And in winter, the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. This we have December 22nd listed here. When we're at spring and fall, these are the days when the um, direct rays are located at the equator. The Earth is not tilted towards or away from the sun. Now notice the direct rays when Earth is tilted towards the sun in the summer on June 21st. They are hitting this Tropic of Cancer, 23 and a half degrees north. And in the winter in the northern hemisphere, the direct rays are hitting the uh, Tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degrees south. Okay, so due to Earth's tilt and the way Earth is revolving around the sun, it changes the location of those, those direct rays um, on Earth's surface, and that's what causes our seasons. So the three basic causes of the seasons. Earth's tilt is one. Earth is tilted 23 and a half degrees. Parallelism of tilt. So what this means is that Earth's tilt is 23 and a half degrees all the time. Okay, so it has a 23 and a half degree tilt, which keeps the tilt parallel in each position in Earth's orbit, and the revolution of Earth around the sun. So those three factors are what cause the Earth to have seasons. The duration of insulation. Duration is the length of insulation or sunlight. So duration of insulation is the length of the day. So that's the time from sunrise to sunset, our daylight. As the angle of insulation increases, what happens to the duration of insulation? So if the angle of insulation is increasing, the sun is getting higher up in the sky. So if the sun is higher up in the sky, it takes it a longer path in order for it to rise and set. So the duration of insulation will also be longer. So the higher the sun is in the sky, the longer the length of the day. If you think about June 21st, how high the sun is in the sky, it stays lighter much longer. So our, day, our daytime hours are longer. And in the winter, the sun is much lower in the sky, and that causes us to have a much shorter day. As the angle and duration of insulation increase, what would happen to temperatures? So if our angle means that the sun is higher in the sky and duration means we have a longer day, of course this will cause the temperatures to increase. So duration of insulation varies with latitude. So depending on where you are on Earth's surface, the amount of daylight that each area receives changes based on its location. In New York, the greatest duration of insulation, so when will we have the longest day? And this, of course, happens on June 21st when we have about 15 hours of daylight in New York State. And the minimum, which our shortest day, would be on December 21st when we have about 9 hours of daylight. How about at the poles? So let's look at this diagram one more time. All right, so looking at the poles, here is Earth's tilt, right? We said it's 23 and a half degrees all year long. But notice how much of Earth will always be lit by the sun. So if you take a look at the shading here, this shading is showing you the amount of Earth that's lit by the sun. The amount of Earth lit by the sun is always going to be half. So here you can see the half that's lit by the sun, whoops, I draw a straight line, is the half facing the sun. And if Earth continues to rotate here in the same tilt, this part that's lit here, that this north pole that's right here, is never going to leave the sunlight. This is the north pole. And here at the south pole, you can see that as the Earth rotates, it's never going to leave the darkness that's on this side. This entire side is shaded dark. This is the south pole. Okay, so this is during the summer when we've got the uh, northern hemisphere tilting towards the sun. On the other side here, you can see with the tilt, and here's the amount of daylight shaded in. This side is in sunlight, this side is in darkness. You see that the North Pole, as it rotates, will never be in daylight, and the South Pole will never leave the daylight. So this leads to 24 hours of daylight alternating between the North and South Pole over the course of the year. So the poles each receive about six months of sunlight, followed by about six months of darkness. 
Um, if you've ever seen the movie um, The Proposal with Sandra Bullock, they showed how in Alaska the sun didn't quite go below the horizon and they had to use those room darkening shades. That was because they lived in an area close to the North Pole in Alaska and that causes them to not have a full sun set for a part of the year. So they use room darkening shades in order to be able to sleep normally. So this shows again our Earth's revolution around the sun and how the position of the uh, direct rays of the sun changes over the course of the year. And that's the end of section 8.2.